Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining on, it's Friday, yeah, on this Friday afternoon. Um, so today I just wanted to talk through a bit about what AMP is. Uh, um, maybe you all uh, saw the time article that we had last week. Why did we build this? Um, what does it do? And uh, probably most importantly, how are the existing clients that are using it? Um, how are they using it? Because it's pretty, it's pretty flexible tool in ways that you can use it. Um, so, you know, it's the first kind of important thing. I guess well, one is who am I? I'm James Nord. I started for a uh, little over eight years ago, um, and you know, have have been part of this industry longer than that. Um, and we were the first influencer marketing platform, I believe, in the world. Um, and, you know, since we launched eight years ago, have been building tools to help brands, you know, connect more easily with influencers, to understand uh, their value, to work with them more efficiently. And, you know, this AMP is really uh, an extension of that. And I think that, you know, a big turning point for us was last year when we kind of rebranded as an ambassador marketing company. And we, we did that because we felt that a lot of influencer marketing was broken. It was too transactional. It was uh, too expensive. And it just wasn't, I don't think it was driving like real value for a lot of brands. And it, it wasn't because influencer marketing doesn't work. Um, I think it was because uh, the ways that a lot of people were running these campaigns uh, doesn't work. And we found, you know, we found a, a kind of uh, equation that, that did. And it was all about, you know, making sure that by the time the influencer hit publish on whatever platform the content was going to, that, you know, that really felt like, um, it really felt like they they believed what they were saying, that they were uh, passionate about it, um, and you know that the story was was honest. You know, I think so much of what we're going for is authenticity, and that's hard because once you pay someone um, and you know somebody is being paid, you call into question their authenticity um, because you know that they had a monetary uh, reason to take that campaign. And so we have to work as, as marketers like that much harder on our sponsored content to bridge what we call the authenticity gap and to make sure that by the time a follower finishes reading that post, they are convinced, they're hopefully interested in your product and want to purchase it or learn more about it. Um, and that happens through honest storytelling. Um, and a lot of times starts with, with real love and, you know, and, and uh, affection for that brand. You know, something that we have now on our, our homepage is, is don't, you know, don't spend good money on fake love. And I think that we looked at the industry um, and the worst parts of influencer marketing um, and it's, it's paying people to pretend to like products that, that they've probably never even used. And, and so, Last year, we, we said, okay, what we do is ambassador marketing. And that doesn't mean that we just do long-term ambassador campaigns, but it means that when an influencer works with us, we want them to think like an ambassador, we call the ambassador mindset, um, and make sure that, again, that post when it goes live feels really authentic for that client. And that's been working really well. I think our clients, you know, we're feeling uh, the same things we were, and we're excited to have it kind of... Uh, verbalized and laid out for them. And, and so then we started thinking, okay, well, what, you know, what technology do we build to address this? Um, you know, we have our existing discovery platform, which is really powerful way to find influencers who sign for full based on their filters, based on their demographics, based on the content that they create, and then understand the good stuff. But was there something else that needed to be built to address this, you know, this new world? And, you know, I think um, part of it also came from Sephora Squad, which is um, going live right now. We, we launched that on Tuesday. And, 
we saw the power of a brand going out to their community and saying, hey, if you've ever wanted to be an ambassador for us, you can apply here. And we built the technology to allow them to do that. And that's been, you know, massively successful. You know, tens of thousands of people have applied to become a Sephora ambassador since we launched that program three years ago and started thinking, you know, how can we kind of give this technology in a, in a kind of lighter weight form um, to more brands? And shouldn't there be a place where a centralized place for, for each brand um, where they can drive influencers who are interested in working with them? And that's, you know, that's what AMP became uh, a, a kind of careers page for influencers as, as Taylor talked about it in the, uh, in the Times piece, um, a centralized place where, yeah, if somebody DM, you know, somebody sends you a DM, you can send them a link and say, you can apply here. You can post it to your feed and say, if you've ever wanted to work with us, apply here. We've got brands who are putting it into their email campaigns. Uh, we've got brands that are putting it onto their home pages, leaving it in their link and bio. Um, so a number of ways that you can get this page in front of people. Um, but we think that that idea of an application is really important, not only because it's gonna make your life easier, but also, you know, these, these platforms have gotten so large, right? There's well over a billion uh, users on Instagram and there are well over a billion users on TikTok. And it doesn't matter how powerful a piece of technology is, you're never gonna be able to find the perfect person um, just by going out and looking for them, right? And so as brands, we, we need to think about, you know, how can we, um, you know, how can we open this up and have that interest come to us as well? Um, I think that, you know, another thing that was touched on in the Times article is, is um, it's just making sure it's fair, right? The, the, the space has been so driven by relationships for so long. Um, it makes sense if you're running a campaign that the, the influencers that you first think about are the ones that you follow, the ones that you really like that you have a connection with because you'd say, well, I followed this person I, for years. I know them. I feel like I know them intimately and I would like to work with them. That happens all the time. That makes sense. Um, you know, and then the next layer is um, the people that they follow, the people that you kind of see getting shared or, or other brands working with. And then the next layer is, you know, maybe people that you find through a tool like for, uh, but that's not everyone, you know? And I think that Again, we've seen the power of, of opening that up and allowing people to apply. And I think that um, you, you end up getting a group of influencers that is more representative of your, your customer base, um, that is you know, more diverse in ethnicity, in you know, location, in the types of content that they create, um, and just you know, results in a better campaign. And, and then the the kind of last reason for it is, is that that idea of, of real love or fake love that we've been talking about, you know, that when an influencer is passionate about a brand and they have an existing relationship with them as a customer, they're just going to work harder. You know, they're going to, they're going to be more excited about it. They're going to really want to do a good job. And more than that, their audience is going to be excited. You know, we have so many examples of, of times where, uh, an ambassador has, has announced a new partnership and their audience gets really excited for them because they know that they've been a fan of that brand for so long. And so it feels like a W for the audience as well, uh, because they're really proud that they got that. And that's, you know, that's what we, we want. Uh, we want people to be really excited and um, giving a place for people to apply is, is a great way to do that. Um, so that's like, that's why, you know, some of the reasons why we built it, but I think um, you know, what, what's next wasn't, uh, in the time space and, and we'll kind of jump into a little bit of that. So what happens once they onboard? So you've got this page, right. And, um, and influencers, customers, whoever can apply to work there. It's also not only an application thing. Um, you know, as we'll see later in the case studies, um, it's a way to onboard the people that you're already working with. So you can track their posts, um, and, you know, once they, so once they onboard, first, what's, what's important is that you get to ask custom questions. So, you know, for instance, 
Um, we work with a number of bike brands, um, cycling brands, and they might want to know, you know, do you ride road bikes or mountain bikes? Um, you know, Dyson might want to know, do you care about hair care products or home care products? And those questions become um, filters, which is important. I think we talk about later on, but they, so they answer those questions, they connect their social accounts, um, and then we are able to um, build profiles for them that, that give you a sense of, you know, what their reach is, um, what their engagement is, what kind of content they're creating, uh, and, you know, understand, is this somebody that we want to work with? You can reject people, um, and we can load up, um, you know, kind of pre-written language for that, that sends an email, or it can just not send them an email if you hit reject. You can accept them as an ambassador, again, can send them a message or not. Um, and once they um, get accepted, let's see why I can't see this Q and A. Um, okay, I'll get to the questions uh, at the end. I think I have to stop, stop sharing my screen to, to be able to do that, but um, keep asking. And once I stop sharing the screen, I'll be able to jump into uh, the Q and A and answer questions. Um, so once you know, um, once you've accepted uh, an ambassador, that's you can start to organize them. There's you know different grouping functions. Um, you know you can say okay, a lot of clients use this for gifting, so you can start to build a you know um, a July gifting list and throw them into that. Um, you know you can have groups that are for your micro influencers, your mid tiers, potential people to contract, um, you know, photographers, whatever, you know, groupings you want, um, you're able to organize those ambassadors, you're able to, you know, reach out to them through um, the platform. Let me just, um, and, and, you know, from the, once they're in a group, uh, you can also export that as a CSV, it pulls all their data in, um, you can export it as, as PDFs, so you get like a nice visual of who the person is and some of their content if you need to present that internally. Number of ways to kind of work with those groups. Then again, there's a communication. So you can currently, um, you can send messages out. You can, you know, have attachments on those messages. You obviously can do like the stuff where you put their name in. Um, it's nice that it, it then can reply to your email. So while it is deployed from uh, the four platform, uh, the influencers will get it and, and the reply will be to your email. Um, again, it makes it super easy to communicate in mass, um, you know, over the next couple and some more structured ways to actually get ambassadors to flow into uh, kind of smaller or large campaigns. Um, but right now this, you know, this communication function, um, is a nice way to just cut some of your timing down because obviously once, uh, the influencers onboard there, we're getting their email addresses, uh, directly from them. So we know that, you know, we have the right, um, right contact and, and makes it easy to reach out again, down the line next six months. We're also, uh, we'll be adding text messaging. This is something we've seen, um, more that you know, it can be easier sometimes to communicate with uh, influencer with um, Sephora Squad and a few other kind of larger activations that we've done. Um, but we're definitely excited to eventually add in uh, text message alerts so that you can you can communicate with those people uh, via text. Um, as sometimes it can be hard to get an influencer to uh, open an email and pay attention to it. Um, we also have a specific gifting tool. This is um, launching in the next couple of weeks. We're just kind of putting the finishing touches on it, but um, it's, a, it's a tool that kind of acts as, as one, a, a uh, editable sheet. So it's a, a, a group of influencers. You can again, like import that group of influencers with their addresses and their email and their, you know, their following and all that. But then you can also create custom columns um, with their, you know, um, with the, their top size or, um, and then we can actually, um, you know, say which products that we ship to them, um, track, you know, when those things have shipped, uh, and then eventually as, you know, we ship all the product out, 
um, it's then going to be able to track uh, for anytime the, the brand has been mentioned. And so you'll be able to go back and say, okay, I did this gifting in June. I sent it to 30 people. How many of those 30 posted? How many times did they post? How many impressions? Um, you know, one of the nice things on board, if they have a business or a creator account, um, which most people over 10K should, uh, then we are able to save stories as well. So we're getting stories and platforms where we're now getting, uh, we have the ability also to get TikTok uh, content, uh, obviously blog content, Twitter, Facebook, um, Pinterest, Tumblr, if anyone you know, still does Tumblr. Um, and uh, we're looking into um, getting um, IGTV and Reels, which currently don't go through the API, but we're, we're looking at getting ways to uh, capture that content as well. So it, you know, the people that you do gift, if they onboard into AMP, it's then really easy to understand what percentage of those people are posting and, and what was the, um, you know, what was the result of that? How many impressions, engagements, uh, all of the content there, easy to download, uh, can make that gifting flow uh, quite a bit easier. Uh, and that's kind of, so like right now, um, you know, the product is pretty new and that ability to, uh, you know, have people apply and onboard into the system to have custom questions that can help you understand them better to uh, accept them or reject them uh, to then filter through those influencers um, and organize them to communicate with them in mass um, and then to run gifting campaigns and track those things with them as well. Again, we have um, a full dedicated team in-house uh, that is building this out every week, we are adding new features to it um, that we are really, really excited about, but it, it's already a really powerful tool. And I think what's been so fun for us is just how flexible and it is and um, how many brands are using it in different ways. And I just want to go through really quickly a few of the examples of how some of our clients are currently using AMP. Um, so Casemate's a good example of a brand that's pretty happy to gift. You know, they, they, you know, they own a bunch of uh, different companies under the Casemate umbrella, um, but they share their ambassador page um, pretty frequently and they share it in their, their Instagram. Um, and they're just looking to get, you know, new micros, um, customers with following or, you know, uh, influencers in general applying through there. And then they are um, accepting, rejecting, and then running gifting campaigns um, through AMP, uh, again, for them, a, a product that is really easy to gift. Um, they're just trying to, you know, to find great people um, that are excited about getting that product. And I think this has been able to really uh, clean up that workflow for them um, and, you know, get through the, the massive DMs that they're getting. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about that um, a little bit later, but um, it's definitely going to streamline the gifting that they're doing. Um, yes, too, is another similar uh, example um, of someone that is, is using this to, to help support uh, launches. They're, you know, uh, pretty aggressive right now in their um, product rollout and in constant need of new partners. And again, looking to find partners that, you know, are really excited about working with the brand. Um, and so, you know, they have uh, pretty frequently just you know, share in their stories. Uh, if you want to be a yes to ambassador, swipe up. Um, and again, been able to drive uh, a bunch of traffic to this page and, and a lot of interest. And and you know, the first place they go then when they're looking to cast a campaign or gift new influencers is to that amp. And and you know, we talked a bit about filtering, but this is I think what's so interesting about um, you know the, the custom questions as well is that. You know, what we're trying to help clients do is, is see beyond the feed, you know, and, um, and really try and understand things about the influencer that maybe you wouldn't know um, just by looking at their Instagram. Because we talked earlier about authenticity and, you know, to create authentic content, you need a story that is, is true, right? And so 
Uh, a good example would be like if you are, um, you know, if you were launching a new product, skincare product, specifically focused at people struggling with dry skin, and you're running a campaign and you gift a bunch of influencers or you pay them, and you know they say, hey, y'all know I've I've struggled with dry skin. Um, and I've been using this product and it's really helped me. Now, if that person never has talked about actually struggling with dry, is the audience to, to believe that? Um, and also when you, you know, when you reach out to somebody, especially, you know, with an offer to pay them um, and say, hey, we've got this new product that helps with dry skin. Like, um, you know, as an influencer, you might be like, oh yeah, I totally like, uh, I totally struggle with dry skin. I'd love to be part of this when you, don't at all um, because you could just say you do and like, who's going to really know the difference. And so you can imagine as you're onboarding into this and you ask, you know, skin type, oily, dry, whatever it might be. Um, then as you go to execute this campaign for a new product, you can go to your filters and you can say, okay, I'm looking for just the people who have, you know, applied to be an ambassador who, clicked the box saying they had dry skin. Um, and then inside of that group, let's say you have 500 people who applied and a hundred of them said they have dry skin. Well, then you can do a search and say, okay, in this search, I want to see everybody from those hundred people who's mentioned dry skin. And then you might see, okay, well, there's 30 people who in the last month have been talking about dry skin. So now you're gonna put those people in a group um, you're going to add them to a gifting campaign. You're going to send them out product, onboard them into that. Um, and then when they go to post about it and say, Hey, y'all have heard me talking about dry skin for the last few months, you know, I struggle with this. So I was really excited to try this new product and it worked really well, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. That like, that's what we're looking for. That's the stuff that, that works, right? That's, that's real. And that's authentic. And, and this tool can really help you, you know, run those kind of deeper strategies and, and be able to uncover stories that you can link to the product story that you're trying to tell. And that's, that's a big part of what we're trying to do here. Um, Beholden's a little different case study. So uh, this one's really interested, interesting, you know, with COVID they were struggling to do full sh photo shoots. And so they've been using this page to find uh, photographers, content creators, who can do mini shoots for them, you know? And, uh, and so uh, of course they, you know, they sometimes use it as well to find, you know, they get uh, DM'd a bunch about brides looking to, to do content for exchange. But, but I think for them specifically, it's about, uh, you know, they're posting to their feed and saying, hey, you've, are you a wedding photographer? Um, that would be interested in, in creating content for us and we'll send product. Um, you grab a couple of your friends, you do a shoot, um, and they can can use that instead of doing the the full scale shoots that they've been doing recently. So I really loved this case study. is It's quite different um, than the way a lot of other clients are using it. But again, speaks to the you know speaks to that flexibility. And and again, like um, as you think about the tool, it's 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 it really does help you to you know to find. Um, I feel like kind of almost anything you'd be looking for as far as like a type of person that's creating content and publishing it on the internet. Um, OXO, you know, they, um, you know, we work with them in, in a number of different ways um, and they're using um, AMP like many other clients to, to, you know, to find people to give, to find people to, to, you know, to include into their paid ambassador programs. Um, but I, I know something specifically was really interesting for them was DMs. And uh, if there's any, you know, if there's anyone in this today who is in charge of managing your brand's DMs, I'm sure it's a constant barrage of people just being like, hey, let's collab. Hey, I'd love to work with you. Hey, you know, uh, you know, I'd love to get this product or, or whatever it might be. And a lot of it is influencers, you know, doing the spray and pray uh, and just, you know, messaging 30 brands a day, hoping someone gets back to them. But, um, and, and I think that's why AMP is, is so great because one, it, it gives you a way to respond to everybody. Um, you know, you don't have to just ignore people. 
Um, obviously, you know, keeping messages in the Instagram inbox is, is difficult um, because it's not searchable. Eventually they expire. Um, also, you, uh, you don't want to give them your email necessarily because then they're going to be following up you know, every week asking you, uh, you know, if you've made a decision, if there's any projects coming up. And so AMP, it gives you this like way to be like, thank you so much for reaching out. Love the enthusiasm. Uh, if you follow this link, this is where we evaluate all of our potential uh, influencer relationships. So just go through the process of the application and we'll take a look. And by doing that one, you, again, you're responding kind of, you know, not ignoring people. You're making them do something, right? You're making them go the extra step. And I bet a lot of the spray and pray uh, messages you get won't go through that process, but it will also help separate the people who are, you know, really are passionate and interested in, and the people who will go the extra step to, you know, to onboard into the platform, to answer those questions, to connect their accounts so you can see the data. And, and again, Someone that you might look at their account initially and say like, mm, I don't know if this is for me, you might a week later log into AMP and see, oh, wow, they have 78% reach or um, you know, they have 20,000 followers on Instagram, but oh, look, they've got 200,000 on TikTok. Um, it just gives you a more clear picture and gives you a better way to be able to make those decisions and they're safe, right? Like, Somebody who applies today or DMs you today may be perfect for a project in six months, but unless you take that DM and put it into a Google doc somewhere and tag it in some way, um, you're never gonna remember, um, you're never gonna re remember who that person is. So six months from now, when you're casting a campaign and you're like, what was that person that DM'd us? They were great. They weren't right for the, what we were doing then, but you know, you won't remember. Um, so pushing everyone to AMP means that you save, you know, they're saved in the system. You can leave notes on their profile and six months later, it'll be really easy to come back, uh, and, and remember that person, reach out to them and work with them. And it's been something that OXA has really been loving. Um, as I said, we work with a number of outdoor and active brands. Um, and, you know, for any kind of active brand, whether it's cycling, running, hiking, uh, camping, you know, kayaking, I'm sure. Um, having ambassadors is a big part of, um, you know, of their strategy. Those ambassadors are usually athletes, you know, and uh, a lot of times they're paid in just free product. And so a lot of these companies are using it, yeah, for the same ways that other people are, DM management, you know, uh, finding new ambassadors. But for a lot of these brands, it's about onboarding the relationships they already have um, so that they can track their posts. You know, so if you have a hundred existing ambassadors that you have given, um, you know, that you've given product to, um, you can onboard those into AMP and you're going to be able to, again, pull reports on how often they're talking about you. Um, you'll be able to communicate with them uh, more easily in a centralized location. Um, organize them into groups, download those things, share the reports around the company, just becomes a lot easier to, uh, to manage these things. And so, uh, again, as I said before, it's not always just about um, going out and finding new people. This tool is also really effective in just uh, tracking the relationships that you already work with um, and making sure all the posts are stored in one centralized place. Uh, American Eagle, uh, Another really interesting one, they, they work with uh, their store employees. Uh, they have a program where their retail employees, um, you know, are, agree to, to talk about American Eagle a number of times. And so they've been using this to uh, onboard those store employees uh, and track their posts. Um, again, what's nice is in the questions, you can ask what store are you, you can ask, you know, for the employee badge, whatever it might be. It's something we've done with Sephora squad as well, um, where there's a employee, um, section to Sephora squad and, and we work with a number of employees. Um, but this is something we're seeing more and more, you know, as brands are looking to have their employees be their kind of ambassadors and, and, uh, and work with 
those employees that have um, a following to to promote the brand and and we love what American Eagle is is doing with that. Um, Flamingo, you know, was one of our earliest adopters of of the platform, um, and again, they're using it in that more traditional way uh, to support their launches, uh, to do gifting. But you know, there was a great uh, example if you saw the when Flamingo launched the uh, their like moisturizer, their their body uh, moisturizer a couple of months ago. It was you know kind of all over the internet. They did a great job, um, but. One of the, you know, one of the partners that they paid for that launch uh, was someone who had actually applied through AMP. Um, they had done a gifting um, with them. They loved the content. And so they went back and they contracted them uh, for a paid collaboration on that launch. And, and I think, you know, I love stories like that. I think that's the kind of, of thing we're hoping to see uh, more of, you know, that you can reach out to that community, find the people passionate about you, work with them uh, and, and, you know, eventually, uh, you know, start to use those, uh, those members who've applied in the paid work that you are doing. Um, so obviously we could go on and on. We have got over, you know, over 50 clients uh, using the platform and, uh, you know, we only officially launched last week. So we're, we're adding more all the time. And there's, there's a lot of different ways to, to use this platform. It is really flexible. Um, but I, you know, I think regardless if it's an AMP or something else, um, in a couple of years, every brand is going to have a place where a centralized place where creators, influencers, ambassadors, advocates, customers uh, can apply to work with them. You know, this is this is where the you know, this is going to be a big part of uh, the future. It's not going away. And, you know, brands need to, you know, brands need to have tools to help understand who their influential customers are, to find those people, to also, you know, pull them in, create community um, and do something special. We've seen in traditional retail, um, you know, how it's important it's been to have that be experiential, right? And the store can't just be a store. Um, and that's true of the relationship, you know, outside of the store as well, is that, that, you know, it's getting more and more important to have a relationship with that customer. We saw this, you know, this summer uh, and going through the fall and the election, how important it, it was for customers that they, you know, values, right? That, that isn't something 50 years ago. That was a prerequisite for being a customer. Do we share the same value set? But it is today. And that, you know, we're only at the, the beginning of that. And, you know, brands are going to have to figure out how to interact with their customers in different ways, how to encourage their customers to, you know, talk about their products organically on their um, platforms. And we hope that, you know, AMP can be a big part of that. Um, I'm going to get to uh, get to questions here. I know we have a few, um, but obviously, you know, we would love to, to show anyone uh, the actual platform in more depth. And if you haven't seen it yet, um, you can reach out to hello at 4.co um, and we can set up a really quick 15, 20 minute demo and kind of show you how it works. But um, let me answer uh, questions here. So there's a question on um, sentiment. Um, that's a good one. We, so we have some, some basic, um, you know, we have some basic like speech, um, speech recognition software that we've built that can measure sentiment. We're actually re, um, taking another look at that, uh, currently, uh, alongside of, of thinking about how we can build technology, uh, for, um, you know, to, to, better help our clients with morality vetting. A lot of the problem with, with or problem, a lot of the challenge is sentiment and morality vetting is context is so important. Um, and computers are, it's hard to code in context um, into, the, into the AI to understand, you know, is this 
is this word which could be considered negative sentiment uh, actually positive in this case? Um, so it's it's definitely a challenge, but it's something that we are um, we are currently working on for sure. Um, are there any other questions about AMP, about ambassadors, influencers in general? I'm happy to happy to answer anything if there is. Um, if not, that's okay too. I always feel weird in the uh, when we do the, this as a webinar because I'm just like speaking and I don't see any of y'all or hear you, and so like I make a joke and I'm, I imagine that you're laughing, but like maybe maybe you're not. Um, so it's always a little weird just speaking into the abyss, but. Um, but if there are any questions, happy to answer. If not, you know, uh, you know how to find us, and you can email us, and and we would uh, we would love to speak more about this product. And you know, we also have again that discovery platform, and um, we manage uh, hundreds and hundreds of managed campaigns a year as well. Um, so really, anything that you want, we can probably do it. But uh, I thank you all for spending you know forty minutes with us here. And, uh, and hope that is helpful in understanding a bit how AMP works, what it does, and you know, where we see it going in the future. And uh, again, any questions or you want to continue the conversation, feel free to reach out. Thank you all so much.